Hey friends, Jack Byer here with NASA Spaceflight. With Starship and other activity ramping up in the Kennedy Space Center area, we wanted to start providing updates on the current status of the various projects going on there. This will be the first of our new weekly series covering infrastructure developments in the Kennedy Space Center area. Let's get right into it. First up, we have a SpaceX facility referred to as the Roberts Road Operations Area. Roberts Road is currently the site of what's known as Hangar X. Hangar X is used for storage and refurbishment of Falcon 9 boosters. One of the first things that is noticeable in this imagery is that Hangar X is undergoing an expansion. This extra space could just be to support more Falcon 9 boosters, but could potentially also be used for fairing and dragon refurbishment as well. Also immediately noticeable are the large amounts of land being cleared, as well as preparations for the pouring of foundations. It is believed that this will become Florida's Starship build site. You can see in this tweet from our own Harry Stranger that SpaceX has submitted plans for Roberts Road that include a 320,000 square feet or 29,728 square meter proposed building. Here, you can see a loading dock being constructed. We've seen this loading dock proposed and plans SpaceX submitted to the St. John's River Water Management District. It's nice to see reality begin to match what SpaceX has proposed, and gives us a degree of confidence in what we might see in other such proposed plans. Another interesting thing that is noticeable is this circular structure under construction. It looks to be the same 9 meter diameter as Starship and Super Heavy boosters. SpaceX does have a history of building circular concrete stands in Boca Chica. We'll have to keep an eye on it in the coming weeks to see how it shapes up. Next up at Roberts Road are these 12 innocuous but incredibly important concrete pads. They are essentially a copy of the same layout we've seen at Boca Chica and will be used for launch tower construction. Each of the nine segments that make up a Starship launch tower are incredibly heavy, and so even during construction their weight must be adequately supported. Each segment's four legs will get their own pad. With 12 pads, SpaceX will be able to construct three segments at a time. Seeing these foundations laid out is an indicator that launch tower construction is coming to Kennedy Space Center sooner rather than later. Super exciting. Finally, at Roberts Road, the road expansion heading north from Roberts Road to Schwartz Road is also making great progress. This is most likely for Falcon and Starship transportation. Moving on, at Kennedy Space Center and SpaceX's LC-39A, there are holes visible in an old liquid hydrogen tank, which could be repairs or modifications necessary to enable it to support storage of liquid methane. Below it, you can see four liquid methane tanks that SpaceX bought back in 2019 when Starship work first started at Kennedy Space Center. Also, it looks like the large yellow crane used for driving piles at the site has been dismantled possibly signaling that foundation work for the Starship launch pad at LC-39A is complete. Next up, we have a different SpaceX facility, this one perhaps a little more familiar to longtime Starship followers and tank watchers. Known as Sidco Road, this is where Starship Mark II was built back in 2019, when there were two competing build and design teams, one in Florida and one in Texas. After the consolidation of Starship work to Starbase Boca Chica, activity at Sidco Road seemed to wane, with Mark II eventually being slowly dismantled. Now, the Sidco site is believed to be part of the heat shield production process, not to be confused with what's known as the bakery, where ingredients are combined and tiles are quite literally baked. This is likely a location where an ingredient, or multiple ingredients, for those tiles are produced. Stepping away from strictly SpaceX facilities now, here we see Blue Origins Exploration Park Campus, which is just south of the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. This is where New Glenn is being built, the campus has continuously grown over the last few years to support Blue's large-scale plans out of the Cape. Here we can see the ground is being prepared for yet another expansion of their Exploration Park facilities, matching plans that Blue has filed. It is unclear what the purpose of this expansion will be, but as soon as any information is available, we'll share it with you in a future update. Another Blue Origin facility is shown here. Known as the Second Tank Cleaning and Test Facility, or 2CAT, this is where New Glenn's second stages will be cleaned and tested. 
It's purely speculation, but this site could also potentially be used in support of Blue's reusable second stage program, known as Project Jarvis. There was a long pause in construction around when Project Jarvis was announced, so maybe it was initially intended for the original second stage, but then the design modified to suit Jarvis. Again, that's just speculation. Next up, we have the Launch and Landing Facility, or LLF, at Kennedy Space Center. This is where Space Shuttle landed in the heyday of that program. It now has a variety of uses, including being used for the delivery of satellites by behemoth aircraft such as the Antonov-124 and landing of spacecraft such as the X-37B. The ground at the LLF is being cleared and prepared for an expansion. Terran Orbital, a provider of small satellites that is headquartered in Irvine, California, are one of the future customers who will build a state-of-the-art satellite manufacturing facility here with construction expected to start mid-2022. Here's a render of what the future of the LLF might be. And here are some plans that were submitted. Last up, we can see on FleetCam, our 24-7 stream of Port Canaveral, that a barge with several large tanks, potentially for use on a Starship pad at 39A, arrived on February 14th. This shot, on February 15th from Stephen Marr, shows them arriving at the Turn Basin, where they will be offloaded and delivered to their destination. That's it for this week's update. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Stephen Marr and Julia Bergeron for their awesome imagery. Thanks to Harry Stranger for his ever-vigilant eyes in the sky, as well as for helping on this script. And a special thanks to all of our members who make this sort of coverage possible. Let us know what you think of this video in the comments. And keep your eyes out for the next one. Thanks, have a great day.